When I finished senior school, the family told me that you don't have any more support from us. In fact, we are expecting you to provide for the family now. So it's the time that I had to go out and I tried different things. I went all the way to uh, somewhere in Brikam, I acquired the land and started tilling the soil. After three days, I looked at my hands and told myself, this is not for me. You know, that ability to also look at people, talk to people and all those things were for me, I think they helped me a lot because they, they were able to show me that there is another way. You know, if, even if you fail, you can still try something. The guy was, is it possible to have nine credits because he was Nigerian? And I was like, yes. He was no, he said, no, this is not possible in Nigeria. You can only have eight credits. Wow. And so I had to defend. They're like, okay, we'll do result checker and all. They were able to do all of that. And they saw that I actually got nine credits. Branding and promotion, it's something that we need to take at heart. If you're doing something that is not innovative, the best thing you can do is to brand it properly. Um, fear and doubt, it's in almost everyone's heart. But the thing is, uh, for me, when they do happen, I recognize that they are there. Sometimes I just push through. And so everywhere you walk, even as a professional, not like a business person, as a professional, Make sure you are willing to learn. Make sure you are willing to scale yourself. Hello, beautiful. Oh, there, beautiful viewers. Happy New Year. It's our first edition for this year and uh, for the start of every year, we believe it's imperative that we look back on the previous years and try to assess ourselves. It's important that we gauge ourselves how far we've come, probably some things that we've not achieved and hopefully we would love to uh, put in more effort to make sure that some of those things, uh, you know, we can push and achieve our goals if you like so i encourage you to look back and uh, see how best you can better yourself because it's important to better ourselves in what we do once again i welcome you to generation next and my guest today is mr muhammad ali ubari the deputy managing director of gambia angel investors network i shall allow him to Say hello to you, my beautiful audience. Mr. Mohammed, it's a pleasure to have you on Generation Thank you, Next. Thank you, Ms. Chor, uh, for having me. I'm glad to be here. And I'm also glad to be the first one that you invite in this year, 2024. I believe 2024 has a lot uh, for all of us. Uh, more successes, that's what we wish for. And I really wish uh, that Generation Next continue to do all the wonderful things that you guys are doing. Obviously. and. Uh, Already I can see the good signs coming, having him, like he mentioned, to be the first guest for this year. Of course, uh, Generation Next, we try to focus on um, your humble beginnings because we understand the importance or the, 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 the power of inspiration. And in that regard, we would love for you to take us through uh, who Mohammed Ali Ubari is from his humble beginnings how he began okay um i don't know <laughs> it's a big question i think it's not uh one session cannot cover that so i'll just try to really run down as fast as i can mm -hmm. um in terms of uh family i'm from a family of four uh same mom but in terms of extended family a family of eight uh, so it's it's quite a large family. I was adopted early on because of the size of this family. And I was adopted by a cousin. So a cousin who was married to my sister. And this person really was the one responsible for most of the things that I had to deal with in life, including paying for school and a lot of the other things that, that came all the way to the point where he could stop in a way because there is just so much that you can do for anybody 
and I owe a lot of gratitude to this brother of mine uh, by the name Babu Karbari. Now, in terms of schooling, uh, you know, just as you know, every Gambian you go through the normal uh, school school type. But I think mine was a bit different because I first of all went to Arabic school. Oh. For about two years I was there. Uh, just as the Bakwe guys, one of uh, the brother of this, uh, my brother that I mentioned, the cousin, went to Europe and was like, you know, when I went there, all the Arabic that I learned, I cannot really talk to anybody. Oh the, the thing is, if you are in Europe, you really need to be able to speak English. And so the vision changed. He was able to convince my brother, please let him balance both going to the Arabic school as well as going to the English school. And so I started going to the conventional school then after grade two of Arabic school. For one year, I think I was juggling both, but eventually, uh, I went only to the conventional school because there was time differences. So I used to have morning and afternoon and then in a particular grade during the primary school everything was in the morning and so I had to sacrifice one. Because I already sacrificed to go to conventional, I just had to continue and then relied on the daras for the Islamic teachings and all of that. So that's how, that's why mine is a bit uh, different, you know, from that get, uh, outset. Right after that, I also had another ton of events uh, during my upper basic school. Uh, I started at, uh, how, do, how do I call it again, BS, uh, so Greater Banjul Upper, only for one year, and then my family moved to Old Yundum, so I had to change school again and go to another school that is called Old Yundum Upper Basic. And from Old Yundum, where I finished, I went to Nusrat, where I did my high school and from Nusrat to the UTG. And now uh, from the UTG, I actually uh, studied accountancy as a bachelor's. And now I am doing master's degrees in Germany in a, a university called Leipzig. Beautiful. Um, what a story. Um, I said what a story because looking at your position now, and uh, I'm sure anybody who's gone online to Google, what they see is you as a managing director. And uh, oftentimes we like to believe that for anybody to acquire some of those positions, it means therefore their family are either privileged in financial wise. So how, how would you have described your family background when it comes to financial, um, in the financial perspective going to school? It was hard. Uh, I think earlier on was better because the family was also not as huge. Uh, the guardian that I had used to be a tailor. He's older now, so he cannot, eventually he couldn't take care of all the family. Uh, you have younger ones who came and then they needed to be paid for. And then you had me who, at least, you know, in the Gambia context, if you go to primary level, you go to high school, you finish, especially in my community, the Fulani, they believe that now you can, you are done with school, right? After grade 12, you are done. And that's maybe just the beginning because it's just basic education. You need to learn more. And this is when support really just get died out. True. Uh, so from that time when I finished senior school, the family told me that you don't have any more support from us. In fact, we are expecting you to provide for the family now. So it's the time that I had to go out and I tried different things. I even tried to run a poultry farm wow. uh, with some with some partners, uh, four individuals, three other individuals plus myself. I even tried to do food processing. So some of the baoba juice and wonjo and stuff, uh, there was a company that we registered, four of us, all those failed. You know, all that is just to try something. I even tried agriculture. I went all the way to uh, somewhere in Brikam, I acquired the land and started tilling the soil. After three days, I looked at my hands and told myself, this is not for me. <laughs> I, I, I stopped. And then I started really networking and trying to just get to know things and go uh, and interact more. During my school life, I think I, I had other opportunities. Uh, the fact that in my school life, I was always a, a leader in a way. From primary school, I was a head boy, junior school, a head boy, even senior school a deputy head boy at Nusrat, uh, and you may know what that means. And so I 
got certain privileges in terms of having large networks, people that I know, and also interacting with associations within the country. And, you know, that ability to also look at people, talk to people and all those things where, for me, I think they helped me a lot because they, they were able to show me that there is another way. You know, if, even if you fail, you can still try something. And this are the connection you build through schools. Through schools. And, and, and so I started um, attending trainings, entrepreneurship trainings and otherwise boot camps, uh, even going to other types of camps just where people will, will you know, for discipline sake and, and otherwise, just to really get more connected and to just get to know what happens. And I started getting advice, asking people, what can I do? Where can I get a job? And start to talk to a friend who talks to a friend. You know, eventually I, I met uh, an older woman through a student that I, I who was from Basse, uh, that I just talked to. Somehow, I just, I cannot even remember really how I met this student from Basse right now. I cannot still remember. But eventually this guy came over to the Combos and we met. We visited the granny and the granny was able to recommend uh, a particular school where I could go and do a course, a six week course on banking. And through this six, six week course, I think that the school used to be metric solutions. At the time, they provide two weeks of uh, attachment or internship in a bank. And I was lucky to go to a bank. And with all the drive that I had after the two weeks in the bank, they saw that I had the capability, the potential to really work in this institution. And so right after that, I was able to apply formally. So they didn't really just take me in. I, I had to apply and say, yes, I was in your bank for two weeks and I proved myself. You can talk to a branch manager X who was there when I was there. Uh, con try to convince them in writing, you know, in applying to the HR. And through this, I was invited to talk to the MD who really liked the idea that somebody with my knowledge, okay, because I had also good grades from uh, junior school. So let's, no, sorry, from high school, this is the Nusrat result, nine credits. And with that, in oh, fact, God. the guy was, is it possible to have nine credits because he was Nigerian? And I was like, yes, he was no, he said, no, this is not possible in Nigeria. <laughs> you can only have eight credits. Wow. And so I had to defend. They're like, okay, we'll do result checker and all. They were able to do all of that. And they saw that I actually got nine credits. And so that was the opening. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't that I knew anybody from the bank. It was just that I was able to convince them with my performance and I was able to do the follow-ups, which sometimes I see a lot in Gambian youth. We don't do follow-up. If there are any opportunities, that you see you need to follow up because you know those people who are there already they you are not going to harm them by not getting back to them that's true yes mm -hmm. in fact if you get back to them they may be able to connect you to things that you may not have expected and so sometimes following up even if i attend events today hello how are you my name is this, this is where i'm from yes i am interested to come to gain but no but they will never follow up they want you to sit again and contact them because uh, they want investment. You need to convince them that they want investors. Just just imagine. And you're the entrepreneur who really is looking for investors and stuff. So following up, I think from then on, I really started to follow up. And today, if I I want something from somebody, I try to follow up. It's important because you've um, you know, realized the powers of, of following up. It's really important. Yeah. But there's something that struck me. Uh, when you mentioned that you even went into poetry like you've tried other businesses with other people and it failed uh it may interest our viewers to understand why it failed but before then i would refer you to an interview that you had this i saw on linkedin and uh gauging from some of the entrepreneurs that we received here if they had to mention maybe one or two problems that they faced in this country and oftentimes they will tell you yes it's true um, you know, there are systems in this country, but they believe that those who are placing those systems are not actually representing the system well, if you, if you may, if yeah. you like. Yeah. And access to capital becomes a problem and other things that they've quite mentioned here. Yeah. Going through your post, I, I saw a comment that was made and you've mentioned that you believe most startups or startup businesses 
don't meet certain criteria. And probably that could have been the reason why one or two startups may not progress as they get into business. Could you take us through that part? And again, like I said, we want to know why your business did not work out. Okay, so I think I'll start with the first question. Um, and it's really connected as you were able to really put that across. Now, the reason why the businesses that I started failed was partly because of lack of experience. Uh, not knowing what you are doing, it's always going to lead you to fail. So sometimes it's really a matter of doing more homework. And, and so when you start out, you start out on a strong footing. Uh, also is to know when you need advice to go and seek it when you need it the most. Um, some of the other things, I think there was also a career for me, career thing. During this process of the poultry, for example, we had some issues with sales and marketing. Uh, going to the market and selling to these, some of these vendors who are also going to sell to clients, they tell you they will take your, your poultry, all of the hatch that you have, been able to do all the ones because we were then doing broilers so we were able to sell everything to him but it was that it's in advance basically in areas so we'll give um, them the, pork, the, the the chicken but that they will only provide the money after they have sold them and even after they sold these chickens every time we go to these guys they don't give us our money oh. and so we couldn't have that cycle of uh, that cycle of you know uh, doing the poultry again and again so we started getting discouraged and, and fed up and so those were certain challenges the other thing for me personally which i still blame myself is that i got a job from you know at the bank and i felt that you know now i was looking for something to hold on now i gotten i've gotten something to hold on even the family wouldn't have let me they just drop a banking under, uh, employment for, for trying poultry. a poultry that is not really working mm -hmm. because really we were not as serious 50 bats 100 bats they were not enough but that was all we had in terms of money in terms of capital to put in and you know inside when i think about where we were i could say that even 100 bats were not good to begin with there is there are studies that were done by gaipa that you need at least 300 bats to actually run poultry farms. I think this study was done about 2015 or 2014. Maybe now you may need more. Okay. So you need to know the minimum number of bats that you need to be able to sustain yourself to begin with. As an entrepreneur to sustain, okay, you are running a poultry farm. You need money to cater for your own self. If you sell the first bad, you take that money, you go, you go to the shop and buy, you know, whatsoever you want to buy to just quench your task. It's just not business and it's not going to be sustainable. And if the money is not coming once, there is high chance that, you know, it will not meet each other. So that, way, that was a factor for you guys when that you was started a factor your, for our, for our, your, in our case. Right. Yes. So right. mismanagement or not really knowing how to deal with some of those things, that was a challenge. And it was also the fact that the others were also engaged in other things. So that uh, coincidence of each one of us was striving somewhere else and we only meet free time to do the actual business. It wasn't really working very well. So those were some of our challenges. Okay. Now, the same challenges that we had then are still challenges that I see within the ecosystem. Still, we have entrepreneurs who are running businesses. They don't really know the puzzle. If, if you are doing any business, first of all, you need to really understand that business. You need to spend some time, whether it is YouTube, I'm not marketing for them, but any platform where you can get some uh, videos, audios uh, from Generation Next, anywhere that you can get information so that this provides you an opportunity to learn more. We have a lot of business support organizations, the GAIPAS, the GCCIs, the the Gene Gambia, the NAS, uh, how do I call it, GYCC, mm -hmm. name them, the Women Chamber, and a lot of them, uh, just to name a few. Right. There's just so many of them, Startup Incubator, etc. You even have Gamtech, you have The Hub, you have Innovate Gambia. 
even so, so these institutions what they do what what would they do for any uh, young person who probably is watching now and feels like they want to um, probably get into poetry business and any other business so what what would these institutions that you've mentioned do for those um, young people these institutions are providing what I call um, basic entrepreneurship training so they can sometimes they are supported by projects that do come to the country sometimes they are supported by the government uh, sometimes private funds funders support them and what they do is they try to look at the topic and provide a training on that topic whether it's export readiness whether it is about how to do your bookkeeping whether it's about how to be a good entrepreneur how to legalize your business in a way how to register your business and have a legal form of business a formal business that is independent of you so some of these basic trainings they provide a lot of input for you uh, luckily where we are in today's context there is a lot of these entrepreneurs that we have that have gone through some of these programs i will say that this is a big achievement as a country we've been able to do a lot of basic training now where we have a gap is from that the, 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 the knowledge that they have gotten now, that basic knowledge of who is an entrepreneur, how to... So the level where they develop their, their businesses, uh, where investors can invest in their, their businesses. Now what I'm saying, if you are keeping records, for example, financial records, it has to be more than that for an investor to invest in you. You have to be able to make something like they call financial statements. It is the financial statements that helps the potential investor or financier to evaluate what your progress. Okay, so, so now, the, now, the now, now you're at the point where you are saying for any entrepreneur to attract any investors, the things that they would need to, to provide. Is that what you're... you're, yes. you're okay, yes. go ahead. Yes. yes. So it's a number of things. Eh? That's one example that I'm citing in terms of accounting only, just accounting. The level that PSOs can stop mostly is just telling you that you need to, uh, fungibility they call it, you need to separate your expenses, your the things that you are spending as a person versus what the business is spending shouldn't be treated differently. Okay. They can teach you this, no problem. But going forward to helping you get accounting where you get final accounts, profit and loss account, or balance sheets, others call it, they are different names. This is where most of the business startup support system, they don't go there. Because number one, sometimes they don't have the capability uh, themselves. They may have uh, skills gaps within these institutions. But sometimes also it's because their goal is not to reach there. They, are, they, they have mandate, they have objects that prevent them to reach there. So they just have to provide this basic education. Now. I've started seeing some individuals who are trying to provide something called acceleration. So there is something called business acceleration. It is these acceleration uh, institutions that can support entrepreneurs to move from that basic knowledge to really helping them. Now, without these accelerators, there is also the knowledge, if you do have it, there are consultancy firms, let's say the auditors, the audit firms or the accounting firms in just the area of, of finance, for example. These guys are able to provide consultancy services to you, where they do this even as an outsource. You outsource okay. such things to them and they do it for you professionally. There are legal things. We have so many lawyers. If you have a, if many people don't understand, if you have a sole proprietorship business, legally, investors cannot invest in your business. It has to be a limited liability company. Okay, so uh, I think this is really, really interesting. And uh, I guess any young startup might not know um, everything of such you are, you, are, you are explaining here. So for anybody who wish to, or how, how do you as a person, your company, comes in to help um, startup business? So the Gambia Angel Investors Network mm -hmm. was formed in 2020. And it was really Gambians who formed it. I think it, there were 20, to be precise, uh, successful Gambians that we all know, uh, even naming them. 
we all know them basically by name. Why they set up the network was to give, give back to community. Now that they have successfully reached certain milestones, how can they invest in other companies so that they can carry them along? Okay. Carry them along in three ways. Give them the money that they need to maybe acquire machines, uh, develop certain aspects of their business, but also to provide them the mentorship so that, you know, the business mentorship. Sometimes you need something called governance structures. You need somebody to help, help you with decision making. Mm -hmm. You need somebody to help you with decision making. And having a governance structure, having somebody who helps to second guess some of your decisions, helps you to filter out the decisions that may lead you to fail. And when you say second guess? It's like somebody that you talk to mm -hmm. who helps you, gives you different opinions or different options. Or tell you that if you do this, you're going to fail because I tried it before or I've seen it somewhere else. The guys have done it before, so they know. If they tell you, don't take that route, maybe you shouldn't take it. And these are things that saves you a lot of, a lot of years and a lot of mistakes that you would have done, that will save you. Sometimes we need mentors, really, in business. Now, after the mentorship, they also provide the network. So being in business, being a successful business person, you have eventually earned some networks, some people that you know or institutions that you know, and you know how they work. If you invest in a company, you are able to introduce this company that you invested in to these partners or you know people that you know, people either your friends, your former schoolmates, what have you, former your business partners, etc. And that could somehow, in a way, enhance the successes of this business. These are things that this business will not have known because they don't have access to those networks. In fact, there are opportunities that they will not have even think of. But you being up there, looking at their business from afar, you can see where they are failing. So these are some of the, the opportunities that uh, the Angel Network does. So far, the network has only invested in two companies okay. after almost three years. It's, it's not good. But the problem is not just within the network. The problem is also within the ecosystem. It's the fact that that gap that I was telling you from the time when these business support organizations were able to stop. From there, there is a gap to reach in where investors will see something that they can invest in. Yes, you are going to the trade fair, you have some products, but if anybody asks you for any report, you don't have any. Even if somebody tells you, um, I want to invest in your business, how much do you want? You don't really know how much you want. If you tell any number, it's just a number that you guess in your head. I think I need 5 million. <laughs> I think I need so much. But there is no data to, to say that this is how much you need. Marketing. You're doing it anyhow. It's, there is no formality in your business. You don't have a single manual that says, this is my operational manual, this is my HR manual, this is my governance manual, all of the other manuals that a business needs. You don't have any of those. And this is, these are the things that an investor or a financier will look at to say, okay, now they understand. They don't have to be with you for one year or two years before they understand your business. They just ask for documents, you share those documents, and they understand what your business is about. But sometimes even to make a case, we, we cannot. Okay, so therefore, those are some, of the, uh, some, some documents that startup businesses are not providing in order to attract funds coming their way. Exactly. Or investors, like you said, come their way. Exactly. Okay, I'm sure that is clear. And uh, any young person who is watching will definitely pinpoint some of those uh, points you've mentioned. Okay, the first advice is for you to, to do a lot of research about this sector that you are entering. The sector, is it trending? Is it something that is 
in the limelight? Is it something that's really happening? Do you see any potentials? Do you see new entrants? An example right now would be something related to AI, artificial intelligence. It's, it's something that's a buzzword. It's out there. If you have the knowledge, you could benefit. So the sector that you are in, what's the need? Is there any need really? Are you solving a real, a real trouble? So there is something called the Ikigai concept. Some, you need to start a business that you know, that you like. The thing that you do in that business, you need to love it. Huh? You need to be able to have the skills to do it. Most importantly, people need to be willing to pay for this. If people are not willing to pay for this, even though you like it, you love it, you can do it, it's not going to sell. If you don't like it, all the others would not mind, would, would not matter because you're going to just get frustrated and then you move on to something else. That's true. The passion is not there. Therefore, when it's not going your way, it just, then, yeah. it just dies down. Mm -hmm. And if your competency in that area is also lacking, whether you like it and people can pay for it, it's not, you're not just going to move the needle. So that is the first thing. Really try to embrace that and get help if you need to. I think there is a lot of sacrifice. There is a lot of um, things that outsiders would not see. And because of this, sometimes we feel that we've created something that is more valuable than anything else. Let's say now the so-called successful entrepreneurs. Let me just put it that way. Uh, they have reached a certain level that they feel uh, really we are getting there. And if you want to have if other people want to join you, let's say investors or even sometimes employees, you start to have problems with them because you feel that you really did a lot of sacrifice, a lot of uh, late nights, a lot of meetings where you didn't go to the door, you just got there and you were sent out. So you have all these feelings internally, things that you have to struggle and deal with. And sometimes you overrate them. The truth is that in entrepreneurship, you really have to deal with this stuff. This is, it's difficult. But overestimating it sometimes prevent you from um, from getting other values, from getting from recognizing the value of what others may provide in your business, even okay. if it is staff. Because you like, we, I build this business when you are not here. You're not gonna tell me how to run this business. If you like to work with me, fine. If you don't want, to get fired or get lost. If it's an investor, the same thing. I was struggling. You cannot tell me the value of my business. I know the value more than you. And now value is relative because what you may think is valuable to you or what you feel is valuable to you may not be valuable to that investor. And so you need to find a common ground. And sometimes talking to somebody else who understand the scenario sometimes will help you to counterbalance, you know, some of these mismatches in terms of either sometimes with dealing with clients, dealing with partners, dealing with employees, even dealing with investors. Wow, I really like that. I think that's really important, as you put it. Sometimes because you felt you've put in the effort, you've put in the work, and who is someone else to come and tell you? I, I, can, I can really, really um, resonate with what you're saying. Branding and promotion, it's something that we need to take at heart. If you're doing something that is not innovative, the best thing you can do is to brand it properly. I was telling a friend the other week, she, she's selling, it's a lady, so she sells uh, honey. I told her the honey, it's natural. You, you don't make the honey. Right. The only thing you can do is to package your honey differently. People who are packaging the honey with the bottles, the Evian bottles and all, that's the way everyone else is selling it. The only way you can make your business outstanding is for you to find a unique packaging. So going back to the point, it's really branding. You need to be able to brand your product, identify your product, let, let it be visible. Go to the platforms where people can identify it. Even as simple as having a signboard where your office is or your shop, howsoever you call it. You need to be able to identify that. Even having a logo, sometimes people don't have. Sometimes when they have their logo, they think that that's all. 
even the brand, like let's say a brand have a voice. You need the communication style that you do on your WhatsApp should be the same communication style you do on your Facebook or the other videos that you do. So there is that brand identity that you need to create. These brand identities help you to communicate with your clients very well. So that helps you to really set yourself apart. But also try to sometimes connect with courses, with, with uh, trends that help anchor what is happening right now with what you're doing. Sometimes it's communities that you want to work with. Let's say you want to engage with a community that is into gardening, for example, or it's a community that's in, into something that's related to your business. And so you are not just doing business, you're doing business to impact others as well. Maybe you're getting your raw materials from them, or you are partnering with other institutions, so you're able to anchor some of these things. I think this is where really you can set yourself apart is to make a proper brand, do the right connections, ride on certain trends. I think you need to be resilient in a way you need to have that, that, that uh, ability to, to be flexible and to be able to push through when it is difficult. Uh, that, this is the resilience bit. You need to really be very resilient. You need to be hardworking. Uh, a lot, a lot goes in there. You need to be competent in what you're doing, and you need to be credible. And if I have to choose two, I'll say competency and credibility, mm -hmm. because a lot goes in there. If you are competent in what you do, mm -hmm. you really try to do it always to the best of your ability. And when you do it to the best of your ability with your competence, people will see the value that you put in. If you're credible, the relationships that you have, the partners that you have, the promise that you give to clients that this is what we deliver, mm -hmm. this is what you will do. And this helps you to be able to run your business properly. I think for me, learning is ongoing. I keep on learning. I learn from people, I learn from scenarios. I learn on the internet, I still go to school. And so for me, life is about learning. If I, I worked with people that they were not teaching me how to be better, but they were teaching me how not to be. In a way, the way that they treat other people, the way that they treated me, I felt that if I do it to anybody, that's not good. So for me, learning, it's, it's just, I just have to tweak it. If you do anything, I try to get a lesson from this. And I try to make it positive. Okay. So that's how I try to do uh, my learning journey. I will never compromise uh, the promise that I make to clients because they are the reason why I run a business. If I tell them, this is the quantity, this is the quality that I am going to offer in a product or a service, I want to make sure I respect that. If I sign a contract with partners, I want to make sure I honor it. Even if I schedule a meeting with clients or customers, I want to make sure I am there on time just to make sure I remain credible and I remain competent to the goals, the objects, the relationship that we have. Um, fear and doubt is in almost everyone's heart. But the thing is, uh, for me, when they do happen, I recognize that they are there Sometimes I just push through. I push through. Sometimes I'm scared and I run away. But when I do that, when I reassess myself, I see that running was not the solution. So increasing is something that everybody battles with. I'm not saying I am not scared of anything. I'm not saying I do not doubt myself in a lot of instances. But even when they do happen, because of the previous experience and listening to myself, 
doubting myself and later evaluating what that do to me psychologically and otherwise I try not to have them influence my decisions so I try to push through and like okay despite the odds what do I have got to lose and then now I try to state the facts where are the facts let's say it's a tele uh, it's it's a tel tele uh, let's say television interview what do I've got to lose to attend the interview so you just have to ask yourself that and sometimes for me it works maybe it works another way for somebody else right. but sometimes it's really that ability to assess when you when you're at your lowest when you're at your brightest try to assess when you were at your lowest so that you are able to see okay, okay what might i have gotten wrong when i was at my lowest so that next time when i get into that scenario i will know how to at least handle myself so sometimes you audit yourself and you don't do it when you're at your lowest because all you do is to take that jab and put it on your you know on yeah. your wounded hole or right. something right. i don't know that expression but something like that you know you are just trying to disturb yourself more mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and harming yourself more because you will not your mind will not give you anything positive but all the negatives all the reasons not to do it So um, again, it's not necessarily a business that I own, mm -hmm. but it's a business that I co-manage. Okay. And and how we market this business, mm -hmm. we have platforms that we use. Luckily, we have the internet that provides opportunities, platforms for a website where we have a website that explains what we do, how we do it. It shows the people behind it. We also have uh, social media anchors or handles, yeah. LinkedIn, for example, uh, Instagram, Facebook, even Twitter. And we also go to events, for example, the, the startup ecosystem uh, events and other events that are happening within the country. Mm -hmm. We try to network, we try to attend these events. We even organize our own events. Uh, we organize the Gambia uh, investors forum for example uh, the gambia investment day forum uh, so these provide a lot of opportunity where people will get to know about you even during the trade fairs we try to go there and talk to entrepreneurs okay and we when we meet entrepreneurs in the street even go online for example and look for them talk to them email them send them a voice note or something try to talk to them try to engage them even internationally, we try to network. So there is uh, an association called the ABAN. ABAN is the African Business Angels Network. It's okay. a bigger network of other angel investors within Africa and even beyond. So this network even contributed to the formation of Gain Gambia. Uh, right now, I think there are 68 angel networks across Africa. Okay. That is part of this group. And, and so we try to network with them and also other networks within this platform. Just so that should there be an investment opportunity in Gambia, where even the angels in Gambia cannot fit the bill in a way the money that is needed is too much, these other angel investors can provide co-investment. Okay. So those are opportunities that we do as well. Oh. So I tried to do business before, I left that, and then I went to professional uh, uh, career by working for others. The first of those was working in a bank for about seven years. Even within the bank, I, I was acting as an entrepreneur in a way. I was trying to learn it all, get absorb it all, and move very fast. In business, you need to be able to scale. If you don't scale, you're going to die. It's the same thing in professional experience. I resigned from the bank. In Gambia, a lot of people, once they get into the bank, they don't want to go out because it's so-called secure. Huh? They don't want to go out. Now, I managed to create an opportunity where I can go out if I wanted. And so when I went there, I didn't stay in one place. I make sure of that. 
if there was anything to learn where I was working, I make sure I knew it. Okay. And so everywhere you walk, even as a professional, not like a business person, as a professional, make sure you are willing to learn. Make sure you are willing to scale yourself. So I started as a teller. In this teller job, I just made sure everything there is to do in the tellering section, mm -hmm. I could do it. Even start to support the supervisor of the tellers. Wow. And everything else, I ended up at the front desk where everything starts opening accounts and all, customer care and all. It helps you to know all the small, small things about the bank because that's where entry is. And because I understood all of that, it made me an asset that any branch within the bank that I used to work with, I, they could just push me there if somebody went for leave or somebody is sick. I resigned from the bank one week after getting my, my, my graduation. Okay, one week after my graduation from university. Okay. They were keep they kept on telling me, Barry will promote you. <laughs> Barry will do this for you. Barry will do this for you. But they didn't do anything. Oh, and that's the bank? Yes, that's the bank. There were no structures. I I was supervising people that were paid more than I was paid. Because the only thing is that these guys were here before you. These guys uh, had certain degrees or academic qualification that you didn't have but i was the head of the department wow, wow. <laughs> so you can just imagine what an <laughs> ugly structure right, huh? right. So, but these are things that you have to deal with True. certain times you just need to know these are distractions there were times that i had a lot of depression but i just had to deal with it and in fact go and get some mentors what can i do in this instance okay buddy do this buddy do this buddy do that because sometimes you cannot do it alone mm -hmm. So getting mentors for me, I think one of the take homes would be really people to start to start to get help, try to get help uh, when you know you need help and get it from the right people. A lot of Gambians who have made it or who are at least better off, they want to help somebody else. All it takes is for you to ask. If you ask me, I'm ready to help you. I'm sure if anybody asks you, you're willing to help them. Yes. That's why you're organizing this program. And so many people want to help. You just need to go out there and ask. Now, um, I'm still on this journey of becoming an entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, right now, I'm still, I'm still learning. So even the program that I'm doing right now is towards building my abilities to become a better entrepreneur. But the organization that I am helping to manage it's also an enterprise, like it's a startup, more or less. It's a, it's a new business that we are trying to mold and grow. So there is a lot of entrepreneurship activities that we do every day. But learning doesn't stop. For me, learning doesn't stop. It's just a matter of learning more, trying to fine tune more. Even the research that I'm doing right now towards helping other entrepreneurs, it's all geared towards when I become an entrepreneur, how do I be different? If there is any knowledge to learn as an entrepreneur, you need to get it. So that when you are really running your business, you don't start to be stopped. You don't start to be stopped at all. You start to succeed and to scale. I want to thank you for inviting me. I want to thank the viewers for listening to the end. And I'm, I was very much honored to be here. And I would like them to keep on asking questions if they don't know the answer. I would like them to keep on trying to find out what would work for them. Sometimes what you're doing today may not be the right thing for you. That should not make you to stop. And do not get too fearful of leaving your comfort zone. If you are on this, because I had to leave the bank, it wasn't that it was easy. It was Nothing was easy. easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even while I was working for this gain, while I still work for gain, I had to tell them I want to go to do further studies. It wasn't an easy decision. So always you have to do certain decisions that redefine your life and they are not easy. So do not hesitate to do them because they will always change your life. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, a lesson for all young persons who uh, want to be better than where they are. Uh, try to leave your comfort zone. Uh, you know, in this generation we are, we are so comport in that zone. You need to leave that comportment. 
because you want to see yourself better and better. We've all heard his, uh, his story and uh, you can see it was in the spring, it was a marathon. Therefore, I encourage us all to keep pushing. Until then, it was, I was your presenter, Sarah Chor, and I've got my team, Betty and Mohammed as always. And uh, thank you so, so much for watching. And once again, Happy New Year. Until we see you again, it's a cheers from myself and uh, Mohammed. Thank you.